I recently saw a video by Winston Moy where he made a hexagon box with CNC and it had an aluminum bottom. I wanted to do something a little different so uh, I drew this up in Fusion 360 just to get some rough dimensions and uh, came up with a great idea. So let's get started making it. I'm using an old mold that I had made for some other project and so I'm just getting this uh, piece of uh, curly maple down to roughly the rough length and width to fit in there and then I'll end up cutting up uh, some angles and just uh, the uh, the aluminum honeycomb uh, just to give some uh, some visual appeal to it. So I got this honeycomb from uh, Zach uh, Higgins over at Resin Works. I'll put a link to it down in the description. Uh, you make some really neat things with this stuff. All right, let's see if this works. This stuff cuts so easily. Um, I was really impressed with how easy it was to cut. I'm using the tape here because I tried to put a uh, marker on there and it just didn't work out. Um, so I used the tape there to, to mark where I needed to cut. I didn't have a better way to clean the, this, um, so I just put it in here and sloshed it around and made a little bit of a mess, but I just wanted to make sure there's no residue left, uh, so I got a good bond with the resin. I'm using Illumilite's Amazing Clear Cast Plus here but because I didn't have a, a pressure pot that was big enough to fit this mold in and I knew that it would uh, get a lot of bubbles in it. So um, this worked out great. It's a little on the thick side. Uh, it takes about, I think, 30 minutes to, to set up. And in that time, I used the torch to get uh, the bubbles out and, and I got a very clear uh, casting. I did add some more resin um, off camera because I uh, had to empty these bottles, uh, the smaller bottles. And um, so that's why you see a little bit more in the cup now. to the, the real size 
Uh, so I'm just going to trim up one side and then eventually come back and, and take it down. I think I took it down to about four inches tall and that just gave the proportions of the, the height um, aesthetically pleasing for the, the actual uh, size of the box. So I thought it was, it was a great size. So that's what I'm doing here. And then I just need to, you know, this was about, I think, three quarters of an inch. And it was a little bit thicker than what I want. Uh, so I'm taking it down to a half inch. Um, and again, just uh, getting those proportions right. Sometimes we woodworkers uh, speed up the footage here uh, just uh, to make the content go a little smoother. But this here, this clip is at full speed. I just wanted you to see kind of how slow I take these cuts. Uh, you know, I kind of let the, man, uh, the bandsaw play dictate how fast I can, it can go. If you go too fast, it's a great way uh, to get not straight cuts or you know, very uneven cuts, I should say. So now it's time to cut this in um, to make the hexagon. And what I want is this to be um, on one side. So a whole piece on one side and then it kind of wrap around um, on the sides. So I don't know how else to do that and I'm probably gonna lose my grain match. Um, I should have thought that through, but you know, it is what it is. So anyway, so what I've got to do is now lay out the lines uh, so that I know where this piece uh, starts and I can cut that off and that this is gonna line up. So that's what I'm gonna do now. stop block uh, set up over there and the and I've got this set at uh, at five inches the uh, stop block is a uh, an inch thick there and uh, this allows me to get four inch sides and that just gives me the right size and you can make these boxes as big or as little as you want you just got to make sure that your, your top and bottom are, are you know you have enough material uh, to cover the top and bottom I'm changing out to the uh, large blade from my dado stack just because it's got a flat cut on it uh, and it gives me the groove that's going to be flat when I cut the, the groove in for the bottom. Since this piece was a little on the thick side, 
I wanted to get most of the way into resawing it with the table saw, and then I'll bring it over to the bandsaw and just do the, the last part of it. I'm going to do the finished sanding uh, on the inside uh, just because it's a lot easier to do now than when the, uh, the bottom's in and it's assembled. And now I'm just taking some 60 grit and roughing up these edges uh, just so that I get a good bond with the 5 minute epoxy. The process to getting the bottom in was a bit of a trial and error. Uh, I took an initial uh, drawing of the inside of the box and then I, add, I took away a quarter of an inch um, on each side, something like that. And, uh, and then when I started cutting it, I just started cutting it smaller and smaller until I got a good fit. So you just have to fiddle around with it and, and do some experimenting. If this is the bottom, why are you lining it up to the top? Um, it doesn't it need to be shorter? And the answer is yes. But the idea here is once I get the right size of the top, then I can go in on three sides and shave off the quarter inch, and that gives me a perfect fit to the inside groove. I went for five minute epoxy for the whole glue up here. Um, the reason was is I was already going to be using the five minute epoxy for the resin pieces and it'll hold the wood just as good. So I decided just to use all um, resin here, five minute epoxy I should say. And I'm just cleaning up um, with the acetone and these cheap brushes are very cheap and they keep getting the little uh, hairs into the, um, the resin here. I'm sanding from 150 all the way up to 600. 600 just gives a good finish on the resin. Much like doing uh, the, the bottom, I'm just going and drawing here and then I'm just going to be cutting outside my lines and then just uh, taking uh, a little bit off each time uh, just to get the, the right fit on that top.
I'm setting up for the rabbit here and what I've got is this is a half inch uh, rabbiting bit and I've got the, the bearing on to do a quarter inch in for now. I'm going to take two passes, one and a quarter inch and then one at my final uh, dimension which is a half inch. The process I used to get a perfect fitting lid was I marked where it was a little bit long. I went back and I cut that off just a little bit at a time. Then it took it back over to the router uh, to redo the uh, now deeper rabbit. And then I just kept going back and forth until I had the perfect fit. applied three coats of uh, deft um, satin lacquer and after the the first two coats I came back with just a, uh, a scotch bright you know green scotch bright pad um, and just knocked the fuzzies off and then applied one final coat and it's uh, it's got a nice satin finish um, don't like it too glossy but I think the satin looks nice I sincerely hope that you enjoyed to this week's project. If you did, please consider hitting that like button. If you want to see future videos, make sure you're subscribed and turn on the bell to, so that you're notified when I upload new videos. And as always, I wish you and your family a blessed day. Thank you.